Sunday, if you didn't know, marks one year anniversary of the fake missile alert that had people across the state in a fear of panic, terrified, terrified for 38 minutes. Gina Mangieri is always investigating and looks at what's changed and what's still left as loose ends. While the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency no longer runs tests and drills about missile alerts, they're still the ones tasked with letting us know about real disasters, though. And still a year on, there are holes in the local and national system yet to patch. January 13th, 2018 went from a normal weekend day to a statewide panic after what was supposed to be an inside drill at the state warning point accidentally blasted out as the real deal. Missile incoming, as though it was not a test. The state had not set up its message software with a function to retract or send a quick correction. Going into it, had there been any thought at the organizational level of, okay, we're going to practice this truly worst thing that could happen to you alert, but what if it went wrong? What if we, what if, what if we called it wrong? I, I do not know. I, I personally can't say that that wasn't discussed. But if I move ahead, I will consider all risks. Today, they have a retraction function, but last year, figuring out a workaround took more than a half hour. While many across the state hugged and kissed loved ones or made final goodbye calls, heads rolled. The alert sender was dubbed the button pusher. He says he did not know it was a drill and only heard the instruction, this is not a test. He got death threats. Did he believe that there was an incoming missile? A thousand percent. Oh, he was a supervisor for years. He didn't take stupid pills all of a sudden. And then he said, this is what I heard. And then people said different things. And then, you know, people were getting fired. And, and um, it was just that everything was pointing at him. Lawmakers from here to Washington demanded investigations. Leadership at the disaster agency was overhauled. The missile alert was very unfortunate to many people. Uh, it allowed all of us to understand how important our families and, and, and our cities and our, our, our surroundings are. That very, but it was unfortunate and it was appropriate that, that the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency looked at itself very, very uh, uh, closely and that it was looked at closely by authorities above us. A governor-ordered investigation and report led to changes in structure and workflow, namely that they're not practicing missile drills, and very few things have a template ready to go in the alert system, just a handful of natural and weather events. Some lawmakers are still asking questions, including Representative Gene Ward, who demanded more answers from the governor last year after a contentious Capitol hearing on the alert. He asked for video surveillance. Haima says the system views but doesn't record. He asked for audio tapes. Haima released only the test message that was used internally for the drill before the message went out. Exercise, exercise, exercise. <coughs> this is not a drill. Exercise, exercise, exercise. But I think for sure, if we get out of the missile alert business, give it to the feds, this should not and should never happen again. I don't think there's any place in history where such a scare has been given to such a large amount of people. An FCC investigation found holes in how and whether various cellular networks receive and send emergency alerts. Many in Hawaii never got the initial alert. Had it been, or for a future event, be the real deal. Still undone, a report to the state legislature that lawmakers asked for last session that called for a review by a couple dozen agencies and officials. Including uh, people from the governor's office, the commander of the Pacific Fleet, the president of the University of Hawaii, bring home some very influential and responsible people and to have them review how we stood in preparedness to handle these things. Uh, as you can imagine, that process would take some time to get that group, 22 people like that, together. Have they come together? No. And the answer is, is we didn't have time to coordinate it because of the events this summer. 
And he says he didn't have time because they had to deal with a very busy year of floods, lava, and a slew of hurricane and tropical storm emergencies. Haima has asked for an extension until December, 19, December of 2019 for that report. We'll follow up. Now, some in Congress want the military to take over any alerts having to do with such man made disasters. That's still pending. So, if a missile is really fired our way, Haima will still have to be the ones to tell us. Back to you.